In 1902, after much discussion regarding the location of the town's new Dominion building and post office, the corner of Queen and East Streets was chosen. Symbolizing Sault Ste. Marie's growth and serving as proof of the government's recognition of the community's importance, the new building would become a focal point of the town's skyline. Construction began on May 1, 1904, and although the building was completed in March of 1906, it would be another six years before the clock itself was installed in the impressive clock tower. The clock was built by John Smith & Sons Midland Clockworks of Derby, England. The Smith's clockmaking tradition began in 1735 and continues to this day. The clock's 810-pound cast-iron chime bell was made by John Taylor, bell founders of Loughborough, Leicestershire, England. Both the clock and bell were shipped from England aboard the SS Tunisian to Montreal. From there, they were shipped to Ottawa for inspection before being sent by train to Sault Ste. Marie. When the clock first arrived in Ottawa, it was discovered that the already completed tower was not tall enough to house the clock's weight system. The tower had to be redesigned, rebuilt, and raised an additional 10 feet to accommodate the workings of the clock. The original roof was maintained, but the new tower incorporated rectangular transom windows on each side. Installation of the clock was completed in November of 1912. One of the most striking features of the Dominion Building's original design was the crown and ball that topped the mansard-style copper roof of the clock tower. During the 1950s, the original ball and crown were removed from the building because of safety concerns due to the deterioration of the tower roof. Despite years of care and maintenance by many custodians, clockmakers, and museum curators, by the early 1990s it was determined that the clock and the tower itself were badly in need of repairs. A leak in the tower roof caused the clock to be shut down in 1992. The following year, an expert from the Ontario Historical Society was consulted, and a 14-page report was presented to the museum. The report concluded that the cost of the replacement clock mechanism alone would be close to $90,000. The museum secured an infrastructure grant which covered restoration of the tower and clock faces. Surplus funds from this grant were used to restore the mechanism. For the clock repairs, Smith & Sons of Derby, England, makers of the original clock, were contacted 
and they referred the museum to Abernethy and Sons in Toronto. The mechanisms were removed from the tower and sent to Toronto for repair, where they were converted from a three-day wine system to an electric motor-driven mechanism. The restoration project was completed in 1994. Since 1983, the Dominion Building has been home to the Sault Ste. Marie Museum. This historic structure continues to be a recognizable landmark in the city. Although the public is not allowed access to the clock tower, this virtual tour will provide a behind-the-scenes look into this iconic architectural feature. The rooftop of the museum is accessed from a third floor entry, which leads to a penthouse on the roof level. A short walk across the roof brings you to the base of the clock tower structure. The clock's original driving mechanism or weight system is accommodated on the first floor of the tower. Prior to being converted to an electric motor-driven system, this weight would have supplied the power to the clock through a pulley apparatus that wrapped around a drum connected to the clock by means of a ratchet and click system. Stairs then lead up to a second level where the clock's transmitting and controlling mechanisms are housed. These mechanisms consist of a series of cog wheels working on one another. The intricate system of axles, pinions, and brass wheels is the driving force behind the clock's function. This is where the building's past resident caretakers would have wound the clock every three days. On the top floor of the tower, the indicating mechanism turns the clock's hour and minute hands. The axle and the time train connects to a universal joint that sets in motion four shafts leading to each of the clock's four faces. These rods connect to a series of cogs that set the timing of the clock itself. These four clock faces have gazed out over the city for the past 100 years. With ongoing care and maintenance, we hope the clock will continue to be a fixture of the community for many more years to come.